guys, it's Sarah. So today I have a book haul for us to share and revel in, and it's amazing. It's gonna have stuff from like December. I don't remember when my last book haul was, but these are the books that I've acquired between now and then. Christmas happened, and after Christmas shopping happened. <sighs> There's a thing in Canada called Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas things go on sale. Deals were had. So I have a lot of books. So the first two books I'm going to show you are some arcs I got from Ring Coast Books. Okay, so the first one is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I got a copy. Oh god, this is next on my TBR. This is like a super hyped book. Apparently it's been compared to the Night Circus, which I am obsessed with. And it's just like about a magical carnival that, I don't know, stuff happens. Then we have Winter Song by S.J. Jones. And this is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I just got these and I'm almost done this. I have about 100 pages left. I dropped it in the tub though, so it's all derpy and like effed up. But this is a labyrinth retelling. Like a labyrinth, Ludo, Jareth, Sarah retelling, but not really. Okay, it's kind of just like got labyrinth vibes. It's about a goblin king who takes a bride to his shadowy underworld to live in. It's just like really, really great so far. Like, like I said, I'm, I got like a hundred and so-ish pages left and it's so so good so far. So both these books, I've already pre-ordered the hardcovers for them because I just know that they're gonna be awesome. This one especially. Yeah, arcs. Next here, I, I'm just gonna go. I got some Christmas stuff that I'll separate, but the rest just kind of like a hodgepodge of things that I've bought from like clearance sellers on Amazon, which I've discovered. <laughs> So yeah. So first here we have Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. I've been trying to read more classics lately and this was the best cover of Wuthering Heights that I could find that I could like still purchase. So I got it. This is a cloth bound penguin edition and it is so very lovely and I'm really excited to get into it because I've just heard really really good things about it and I've never uh never read a Bronte book. So yeah. Next here we have a book. Okay. <clears throat> I saw Rogue One way later than I should have. I was just like waiting because the timing wasn't very great. But I literally watched the movie, felt so many feels, and then I went home and bought the novelization of it because apparently this one is one of the best Star Wars novelizations out there. This is Rogue One, the Star Wars story by Alexander Freed. And of course it's one of the new Star Wars canon books and it has apparently a lot of backstory on the characters and just like more of an insight into the Star Wars world and yeah so I am a fan. If you haven't seen Rogue One yet you gotta see it. It's awesome. So I don't know if I've hauled this one yet but I'll haul it again for fun. This is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff and this is the UK cover because the American slash Canadian cover really sucks. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Um, it's amazing, by the way. I got this off Book Depository because I was like, it's worth it. I got this like back in November, I want to say, but it is just a stunning book. And I've heard some mixed things about this story. It's kind of like a weird high fantasy and apparently it uses really, really flowery prose in it. From what I've read of Illuminae, I like J. Kristoff's writing. Um, so I'm really excited to get into this book just because I've heard such mixed things. I think I might like it because I really like flowery writing, but who knows? There's a beautiful book in it for me anyway, regardless. I don't know. Haha. -ha. Speaking of Jay Kristoff, I got Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. And there is a story about this and I'm really upset. <laughs> So what happened with this was I I updated my phone and I updated my Amazon app and when it updated it switched from the Canadian version to the American version and so I was looking and I saw Gemina was on sale for $13.50 and, like and I was like, oh my god, I gotta buy that. So I one click bought it. It was off the American app, meaning it was from the American site and I'm not in America. So. I had to pay seven dollars and something cents to ship it to Canada, but then you had to convert the money into Canadian, so it ended up being so expensive and I'm super annoyed because I didn't notice until I got my shipping invoice after it had already shipped. 
that it was far more expensive than $13.50. So that's my own fault for like not double checking and one click buying on my phone. But I, it was, why would it switch from the American preset to the Canadian? Like I was still logged in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I got Gemina. I haven't read Illuminate. I read like half of it. Well, I listened to half of it on an audiobook. So I need to read the first one and finish this one as well. It's just like a sci-fi in space and it's told in weird like logs and stuff. I'm sure you know, but for those of you who don't, Cool. So next year I have Carved the Mark by Veronica Roth. The only reason I bought this was because it was likened to if you like Game of Thrones and Star Wars, you'll like this. And generally I don't like it when people compare to other things because that screams on originality. But if someone says like Star Wars, I will listen. It's like a sci-fi kind of dystopian about worlds that are battling and there's essentially something called the force but it's not actually called the force and people get their like magical powers from it. It's Star Wars. Next here I got Marina by Carlos Ruiz Zafon and so I got this actually on the clearance bin in chapters. I've been wanting to get this book for a really long time and just because I've been wanting to read this author because apparently he's amazing. Two students go to a boarding school in Barcelona and they see this mysterious woman like go put a flower on someone's grave and like scoot away. They're like what the hell is she doing? And it's like this big adventure and I'm pretty sure it has something to do with uh, vampires but I'm not 100% sure but apparently it's like a really gothic great story and I've just been wanting to read this one for a while and the fact that I found it for five dollars did not hurt its case. So it came home with me. Next year I have uh, one of my favorite books because it's so weird and that's Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. For those of you guys who don't know, Welcome to Night Vale is a podcast that's just like so weird and bizarre but awesome. So I listened to the audiobook when I went to Mexico last year and I did a video review for it and I'll leave that down below because I, that's one of my favorite video reviews I've ever done because I just kind of like was in a weird character. I don't know. It's, I don't even know how to explain this. Here, I'll read you it's the beginning of chapter two because this just kind of sets the tone. There's this house. It's not unlike many other houses. Imagine what a house looks like. It's also quite unlike many other houses. Imagine this house again. Given that it is simultaneously not unlike and unlike other houses, it is exactly like all houses. One way it is not unlike other houses is its shape. It has a house-like shape. That's definitely a house people might say if shown a picture of it. One way it is unlike other houses is also its shape. It has a subtly unnatural shape. That's definitely a house, but there's something else. Something beautiful inside that house. People might say if they were shown a picture of it. It's more like... Like... It's actually upsetting me now. Please stop showing me that picture. Please, those same people might beg a few moments later. It is a terrible, terrible beauty that I do not understand. Please stop. It's just... Okay. I love, <laughs> I like, because I like listened to this book a while ago and fell in love with it, I was like on the prowl for a used copy and I got one. Next here we have the Puffin Clothbound edition of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So I'm really, really excited about this book. I've actually been listening to Anna Karenina um, as an audiobook in my car when I am driving to and from work and school. And I, you know, this book is a clunker. It's about like, I don't know, 800 pages long. And I'm probably about a third of the way through the story. The, the audiobook is so long that I couldn't listen to it all before it uh, had to go back to the library. So I was like, you know, I'll just buy the book and read the rest of it because the audiobook is like 35 hours long or something. So. I did, and I, this was the nicest version again um, of Anna Karenina that I could find, that I could still like purchase from Canada, because these puffin cloth bounds are just so pretty, like I am a fan, and I'm really liking this story so far, and I accidentally got spoiled on the end, and I know you can't be like, oh you can't call spoilers, this book is like 200 years old, but I've gone my entire existence until like two weeks ago without knowing the end of the story, and then I just saw it, and I was like, oh. Well, so that happened, but I'm still really excited to finish the story regardless, so yay! So next year we have kind of like a combo uh, 
book thing. So first here we have Roseblood by A.G. Howard. And A.G. Howard did the Splintered series, which is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. But this is a Phantom of the Opera retelling. And I have heard really good things about this. As soon as I heard that there was a Phantom of the Opera retelling, I was like, you know, you're getting pre-ordered. So I pre-ordered this back in like October and it came in the mail and I was like, hooray, I can read it now. Apparently it's pretty entertaining and I just love Phantom of the Opera so much. So yeah. So alongside that, I also took the plunge and got the actual Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. I read this when I was like 10 years old. No. I read this in, I know, I read this in elementary school and I thought it was so cool. And ever since I've just like really enjoyed Phantom of the Opera. And so this edition is really interesting. It's one of the Knickerbocker classics where it's like bendy. So it's like considered a paperback, but it's dust. So I was able to find like a used, a used like new copy on Amazon and I was like this is awesome. It's got like a nice big font, you know, because it's quite a short story. And I just really like this edition as well. So hooray. Okay, so here I have some books that I got for Christmas from some people. Uh, one's from people at my work and the rest are from my mom. So people at my old job, I just had to quit because I'm not commuting to that particular city anymore. So I had to quit and so they're like, Sarah, as a going away slash Christmas present, we got you this. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the original screenplay. Oh, it's so awesome. I saw the movie and it's amazing. And this book has freaking Niffler on it, which I'm obsessed with, by the way. Um, but yeah, it was so incredibly sweet and I'm just like so pumped. I haven't actually read it yet, but you know, I have it now, so I can. <laughs> so yay. Okay, and so the next four books are from my mom. There's another one, it got lost in the mail and I'll just tell you what it is. We got these all from Book Depository. I made like a wish list. My mom got me some. She got me Frankenstein in the Penguin Cloth Bound Edition and it hasn't got here yet. It got lost in the mail, so they're sending me a new one which is coming eventually, but so. Then here I got A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings by Charles Dickens, and my mom is really a huge fan of Charles Dickens, so, and it was Christmas time, so she's like, I'm just gonna get this for you. Okay, so another thing that she got me, it's kind of weird, um, <laughs> but there's like a backstory behind it, and that is Kingdom Keepers by Ridley Pearson. So this is the fourth book in a series, it's like a middle grade series, about kids that go into Disney World, and they like go there after hours, and all these magical things happen and like evil Disney characters come alive and like animatronics come alive and it's just like ridiculously amazing. She got me the first couple books the last time we went to Disneyland because they took me to Disneyland when I got diabetes because they're like oh crap something to make her feel better and then when we were there I bought the first one and then she got me the second and third one so she thought it'd be cool for me to get the next one so I'm going to collect slowly collect the whole series and read them all because I've only read the first one but it's adorable if you like Disney stuff like I do I feel you would really love this and there's actually like a new kind of spin-off series that's based in Disneyland so I <laughs> I want to read this whole series so that I can read the Disneyland one because I've never actually been to Disney World I've only ever been to Disneyland but I've been there like seven times so I've been incredibly lucky um, seeing as I live in Canada it's quite a distance but yes okay so the last two books here I have been wanting them for so bad. This is what prompted my mom getting me books. I was like, Mom, for Christmas, you have to get me these. And they are two books by the uh, design company Mina Lima, and that is Peter Pan and the Jungle Book. For those of you guys who don't know, Mina Lima actually does a huge amount of the graphic design in Harry Potter. They actually designed the cover of this book, so overall the company is super awesome. Besides the Harry Potter books, these are the only two like classics that they have done. They are just so pretty and okay here. I'll show you Peter Pan because it's one of my favorite books of all time, but essentially this book just has all these special graphics inside of it that just make it so interesting so you kind of read along and it's got like old-fashioned-y stuff in it. I'm just really a huge huge fan of these books and I'm so pumped that I got them. I don't know it's just like such weird beautiful editions. Here's the Jungle Book again like I would highly recommend these books if you like see them somewhere buy them because I don't know it's just such a treasure like these I'm gonna probably keep forever if I don't wreck it. Uh-oh. I feel this would be better if this was, like, on a table. It's just got, like, such interesting 
things. But yeah, it's just like super, super cool and I'm so pumped to have them. But yeah, so that is my wintry, Christmassy haul. I am so happy about these books that I got. Please, if you've read any of the books that I have shown you today, let me know your thoughts on them because I would love to know. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching my video. My name is Sarah and I will see you guys later. Thank you.